approach just a wild game tonight yeah. from start to finish, going into no. that overtime especially? How do you put this one into words? Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit of a carbon copy the other day. You know, I thought we lost focus in our offense in the second quarter. Um, you know, we just kind of didn't take the stuff that was there. We played a little too cute. Um, they allowed it, you know, allowed them to tighten it up a little bit. Then we came out flat in the third. They hit three threes again, tight, tightened the game up even further. And then, uh, you know, offensive, you know, just got the ball got sticky again. Just not uh, trusting the ball movement in key moments. Fast forward to when Dilo was able to um, end regulation, tying it up. What happened on that play um, that Carl had the ball looked kind of looking no, for it was, somebody? I mean, it was we we were actually were uh, setting up to run uh, four or five pick and roll at that point in time, um, and uh, yeah, so he did that, and then Dilo squared it open on the wing, and, and they went one on. Chris, in overtime, what did you see offensively in terms of, I mean, it seemed like Cat had a couple of good looks, but then it really had a hard time getting better looks down the stretch there at the end. Yeah, I mean, um, got a couple of good looks, as you say, you know, missed a couple of free throws there. I thought thought things were open uh, on the slip. We missed it a couple of times. We missed the big to big at one point at the, at the nail. Uh, that was wide open. Uh, you, know, just, you know, literally just a little bit too much ball uh, pounding early. And, in terms of uh, their three-point shooting, Clarkson, did, yeah. were, they, did you, were they getting great looks and, or tough shots, or how did you evaluate just the defense on the perimeter? Bit? Yeah, I thought, again, I thought we could have been t you know, way tighter on them. You know, they obviously, they wanted to spread, spread us out. Um, but you know, they hit a couple tough ones, but I thought we just have to compete through those screens a little bit harder. I thought we died on some screens that gave them just enough separation. And then at the end of shot clocks, you got, you know, I got to know they're going to try to pull up on you, and we just got that beat there. So. In terms of that third quarter funk select, the first two, is it? Do you, do you see anything just in your, in the approach, just coming out of the out of the gates, or? Um, I mean, it's you know honestly, it's you know too too soon to tell like what the personality of this team is really going to be right now, um, in, in those types of things. Like, I didn't feel like there was any funk. It just kind of looked like a little bit flat. You know, so. This is like two games in a row where not tight enough on the perimeter. Where what you want to do with Rudy? You think that's just guys not getting it through their heads or laziness, or what do you think it is on that? Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely, you know, ball. today was a lot of ball contained, you know, and um, low buys and then when they were spreading us out and got some easy kickouts and um, just not physical enough. Like, we got to get into guys and they got to feel us a little bit more, whether it be whether they're handling or whether they're trying to get through a screen. Seemed like some of the best second half basketball came from the reserves. Did you think about playing them more in the fourth, or did you just kind of think you just got to ride the starters and let them? Yeah, I mean, out? I thought, uh, you know, I tried thought about going back to Jalen, um, but uh, you, know, I, you know, you know, I thought we were getting enough out of the first unit there. So, Chris, in these first two games, there's been a handful of incomplete passes to Rudy on the low or mm -hmm. on the roll or in the low post. Yeah, do you attribute that to anything outside of just? Needing to get more. Yeah, time I think together. so. I think so. I mean, a couple times there in the third quarter or whatever, fourth quarter, I don't, whatever period it was in the second half, we we're trying to shovel it to him in tight spaces down and down low. That's that's probably not the best way to feed him. Um, uh, Chris Ant scores thirty points in regulation, doesn't attempt a shot in overtime. You know, do you think that's more of a function of? You know, the ball just not finding him, or is there a situation there where you'd hope that, that Ant would kind of go up and demand the ball in a situation like that? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's on me. i got to give him the ball more. We ran a couple things to get the ball in his hands. Um, and then, you know, again, again, the ball got sticky. We tried to, you know, we tried to get the play through Cat there. Um, but, yeah, it's, he's got to get some looks. It's, it's on me. Chris, you mentioned Jalen. How um, how much trust do you have in him right now, with, especially with the way he's been on these first two, two games? And when... Malik was part of that trade. You know, did you envision Jalen kind of stepping into those kind of minutes when he was when he was traded away? Uh, well, I have a lot of trust in Jalen. You know, I, um, and uh, yeah, we did. This was the pathway we were trying to create for him to be able to play a uh, more a more meaningful and consistent role for us. Um, you know, and he's been he's been playing well. You mentioned the ball got sticky. How do you coach that out of them? Like, what's the correction? Yeah, that's you know, obviously, um, this. 
building trust. You just got to build trust and make the right play. And um, you know, I think uh, you know when we do run a set or we call someone's number at the moment, they feel that they got to make the play uh, rather than the play that leads to the play, which is oftentimes how it is in those situations. So. The balance between rebound contest when Rudy's not getting the rebound and guarding the perimeter seems to be hard for the other four guys to figure out when to get through the boards and when to get outside. I mean, there seems to be a lot of no man's land when you guys are flailing. Is that scheme and just familiarity, or is that something that uh, is court awareness? What do you think it is? I think it's, I mean, honestly, I think it's just more want to. You know, just guys have got to go pursue the ball. Um, whether it's cracking down on the help or whether it's flying around the perimeter, I, you know, it's a lot of times guys are just standing and watching, and it's, at that point it's too late, particularly for a team that's, um, you know, crashing hard, and these guys got a bunch of guys who go. The ball got sticky pretty consistently at the end of games last year as well. Yeah. At some point, is that just kind of guys' personalities and what they're going to do in those spots? Well, let's hope not. You know, we just, you know, we uh, we just we just we just kind of talked about that a little bit that. Um, but uh, you know you gotta get a lot of guys who want to be closers, but um, sometimes you just when you have talent, you, you gotta let the game decide how it's gonna unfold and close with uh, by making the simple play to the open man, open man. Chris, this game was, was so much more offensively dictated by Ant and Velo than, than the first game or that that last preseason game. Is that a is that was that a point of emphasis or is a, a product of kind of the, the nature of how a, a bigger Utah team matches up? No, I, I mean, we don't really, I mean, we certainly have points of emphasis coming into the game about how we want to play offensively, but I, uh, we we don't, we didn't make it a point that those two guys would be um, highlighted, if you will. Um, we felt that Ant would be able to get to the rim pretty well tonight, uh, and he did, and he finished pretty well. Awesome, thanks. Okay, thanks. thanks yep. All right, that's it.